Hey everyone, this is Graham Weeb, and today I want to be talking about this anime-inspired electricity effect that I made in Blender. Now, there's a few things that I wanted going into this thing. One of them is I really like these arcs that are going across between these two boxes. And the other thing that I like is that the boxes themselves seem to be electrically charged. And I wanted to also make this effect in a way that didn't make it so that it had to be on boxes alone. You could put this on a character, you could put this so it arcs between various objects, and that the objects themselves, no matter what they look like, can still have this sort of charging effect on them. So that's sort of how this came to be. Now I should start off by giving some credit. The technique that we're about to use is one that's been used in video games, and I first saw it from a tweet here from Clement when he did his Riot Art Contest submission of this really badass electricity. And he used a mesh flip book using the vertex colors of the meshes. And due to us being in Blender, we're going to do it a little bit different, but the core principle of this mesh flip book remains the same. So I started off with a sketch. So I took my trusty grease pencil and I just sketched out what I wanted a little electricity arc to look like. And it took me a few tries, but I eventually got something that I felt was good enough for this tutorial. And this particular effect is fantastic when you can add more than one type of arc. So in this case, I've only done one grease pencil animation, and this whole effect is driven off of this one grease pencil here. But you can imagine that if you had more, if you had two or three of them, you can get a lot more variety out of this effect. So it starts off like that. And then once I've got down something that I like, I swap into modeling mode like this, and I am going to hand make each frame. I'm just going to extrude it out by hand. So I've got each frame here. There's five frames. So I just go through them one by one, mesh it out. So that's two, three, four, five. This is another reason why I picked electricity because there's not a whole lot of frames that electricity needs to be around for. So it's not a huge modeling task. So after that, I went and I laid out the UVs for these particular elements. And that's sort of the key bit here is instead of using the vertex colors, we're going to wind up using the UVs. So if I go into the UVs here, you can see that when I unwrapped this frame, I scaled all the UVs down to zero, and that just made it a dot. And I'm going to wind up using the grid here in the UV editor, and I'm going to wind up using that as basically a way to just place all my frames in a row, just like that. So if we take a look at a few more frames. Here's frame two. You can see that it's moved one over. Frame three has moved one over from that. And I keep doing that until I've gone through all of my frames. After that, we combine it together into one object. And this is where the magic happens, is that we want to make sure that each frame stays on the screen for an equal amount of time. So we are going to equally space our UVs or little UV dots as much as we can. So in this case, they're probably, they could be centered a little bit better, but this winds up working just fine. Just make sure that they're as even as you can get them. Now I've got this plane here in the background to sort of illustrate what our shader does. So I'm gonna to swap to the shader. And this slices group that I've made here is what makes this work. I'm gonna unplug it here. And we can see that we've got a little bar, a vertical bar here. And as I scrub between 0 and 1, you can see that bar snaps across. And you can see here in our effect, because we had one UV tile here, another one here, 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 and here, you can see that as we scrub across, we are applying basically a mask of color to just that frame of the electricity. And that's pretty cool. If I had more than five frames or less, I can use the number of slices here. 
So here I can swap it to 10, and you can see that the bar got smaller. And it still goes from 0 to 1. It covers all 10 of those slices, but it goes through them like so. So it doesn't matter how many frames you've got. doesn't matter. This slices thing will take care of it. I'm going to show you how this is made. If you want, let me know in the comments. I can do a drill down of exactly how I wound up designing this little node group that does this. But for right now, I'll just go through everything that you need to make it yourself. So I'll start off by leaving this here. Feel free to pause the video if at any point you're confused about where things are connecting. And with that, let's begin. So we've got our divide here, and this is a one over our number of slices. We're going to take that, it goes over here, and that gets divided by two. That gets added back together with our zero to one, and that whole thing gets multiplied by our number of slices. We're going to invert that here, and we're going to round it with a value of two. That gets divided by our number of slices again, and we're going to add it to our gradient input. Now at that point we split off and do two things. The first one is that we take a less than with our original divide here, and the other one is we add our divided, our original divide, and then we do a greater than against the original divide again. And we're going to multiply those two things together, and that's what we output. And so what we get out of that is a nice black and white ramp. Well, I shouldn't say ramp it because it clips, but we get a nice black and white mask that slides across like that. Now, at the time of recording, Blender 2.8 is in beta, and as a result, this particle info thing here, which gets a 0 to 1 value for the lifetime of our particles, does not currently work in Eevee. So it, this is a cycles-only effect currently, but I have no doubt that they will eventually add Eevee support for this particle info node, and then we'll be in business. But as of right now, cycles-only. All right, we're going to plug that back in our 0 to 1, and we're going to start looking at our particle system. So in order to get this arcing, I've broken it down into two systems. One system is just this arcing piece that goes between these two planes. And that's just spanning the boxes there. And I want to make sure that the particle size is enough that it covers the arc. And by having it on both sides, it randomizes it a little bit. So I've also got a randomized phase on our rotation, so that way I get a bit more variety out of these electricity arcs. And that's the first half. The second half, in order to get it to work on these boxes, or any shape, is I wanted to make sure that it would arc off of the surface and then back. Or in the case of the side, it would arc, go around the side, and arc back in. Or maybe if there's a ground plane, it would arc to that ground plane. And the easiest method that I saw for solving this was basically contorting it into a circle. So that's our other particle. If I take a look at our particles that we have here, you can see that we've got this here, which is how we arced between the two boxes, and we've got our circle. Now, this is actually the exact same mesh. So I started off by taking our mesh that we had combined, and I used some movement, just G move, and I moved it so I got a bit more interest along this axis, because up until this point, it's been purely flat. Wanted to get a bit more dimensionality this way. So that way, as it rotates, it gets a bit more variety. After that, I took it, and this one here is the test that I did, and I basically subdivided it and put a simple deform on it to get our circle. And then this version here has the pivot set to the correct location, which is right smack in the center there. And that's pretty much it. I guess the only other thing that I would really need to talk about is the fact that this particle system over here 
has an extra texture on it, which is a simple ramp. And I'm using that to allow it to grow the particle over its lifespan. So that's just this blend here. You can see the color ramp down below. And with the mapping set to strand particle and the influence with size there, you can basically make a gradient that does a size over life. So that's what that's doing there. So I got a little bit more variety with those, makes it feel a little bit more alive. And at this point, it's ready to render. So there's a viewport preview issue. I'm not sure what's going on here, but this renders perfectly fine. But you can see here that it, it shows up and then some of them turn off for some reason as I flame, frame through. So I'm not entirely sure what's going on with the viewport here, but rest assured this does work at render time. And that's pretty much everything you need to make something that looks like this. If you have any questions, let me know. I'd be glad to answer them. And other than that, I hope to see you again in the next one.